evaluating microservices architecture. Well, you can certainly be assured you'll likely see something on microservices on the exam. Matter of fact, probably a few things. But what we want to focus on for this objective is to understand what a microservice is, why we want to use a microservice, and also try to understand some of the benefits as well. So we'll go ahead and talk about microservices now. We'll go ahead over to a whiteboard after this, and then there'll be some test tips on microservices as well. The first thing about microservices is that generally if we're using a legacy app, and we want to go to microservices, there's a lot of work we want to do. However, the benefits are pretty numerous. For example, maintainability, isolation of faults, uh, portability, you name it. But microservices is really an architecture. And if we go from legacy to microservices, we're changing our architecture for our application. And if we think about it from a design perspective, it's really a different way of thinking because generally applications 20 years ago, for example, were designed to be a box. They were all in the box. And now microservices are not designed to be a box. They're really designed to be more of numerous boxes we're gonna create and tie those boxes together through essentially an architecture that is going to allow us to provide flexibility, uh, integration, performance, isolation, etc. But with that said, we want to know, first of all, what microservices are. And the next thing we want to do is realize that there are some benefits of microservices as well. For example, they're simple to deploy and understand in most cases. They're reusable, faster isolation if there's an issue. In a legacy app, traditionally, if we had a query service, for example, that query service was tied not only to the user application, but it was also tied to the database and all the plugs and um, coding in the background had everything pretty much as one application in the old days. Now, when we develop our applications, each individual service, for example, is going to have its own little microservice. Instead of putting together 20 different services in one large service, we're just breaking them up into 20 mini services or microservices. And this also reduces risk as well. Let's go to a whiteboard and talk about microservices, specifically around Google Cloud services we may want to consider.